civil service is regulated by the Civil Service Act of 1993, PNDC Law 327. The local government service is regulated by the Local Governance Act of 2016, Act 936. But there is a Presidential Office Act, which is regulated, so there's a Presidential Office, which is regulated by the Presidential Office Act of 1993, Act 463. And that is where the problem is. All the uh, suggestions that have been made, they are true, but they are actually covered under the Presidential Office Act. Except that it is an act that is so bad, but presidents have found it so useful that nobody has talked about revising or amending the act. The function of the Presidential Office is to provide the president and the vice president such services as they may require for the efficient and effective performance of the executive functions of the president and vice president under the Constitution and any other law. That is all their function. Now, you, if you don't take it, you will interpret this so broadly as to cover everything that the civil service and the public services do. Because all of them are assisting the president and the vice to perform the executive functions of state, their executive functions. So the function assigned to the presidential staffers is so vague as to amount to duplication and overlap. The idea, because I was part of the team that drafted that act, it's one of the first acts that we passed, the first government of the, first, of the Fourth Republic. The idea at the time was that when advice has been tendered or options proposed by a civil servant or a member of the local government service, the presidential staffers will check for their consistency with the president's vision, his program, and the party's manifesto. It was never the intention that the presidential staffers will substitute the bureaucracy and then the technocracy. It was never intended that they will compete and rival the civil servants and the members of the local government service in their roles for which they have the requisite qualifications training, knowledge, expertise, and experience. Now, if you look at the features of the presidential office and all the people they've been describing, they've all been appointed under this act. Because outside of this act, the president has no other appointment powers apart from those contained in the constitution and in the other laws. The president is the one who assigns duties to the presidential staff. This is in section three. The number of presidential staff and their ranks and grades are determined by the president. They hold office at the pleasure of the president, otherwise they have the same tenure as the president. Their salaries, allowances, and facilities are determined under Article 71 of the Constitution, and so on and so forth. The problems, there are many problems with this act. First, there is no limit to the number of presidential staff that a president may appoint. And that is why this problem has arisen about numbers. No matter the number that you appoint, a president is acting within his powers. The only limitation is that he must announce or report the number that he has appointed to parliament. But there's no upper limit to the number that he can appoint. There is no designation of the offices to which the presidential staff may be appointed. There is no indication of the ranks and grades to which the presidential staff may be appointed. There are no qualifications for the persons who may be appointed presidential staff. The lack of security of tenure of this staff constitutes them into a special category of political public officers who are outside the civil service and the local government service. They are therefore not subject to the disciplinary and other regulatory codes that other public officers are subject to. 